and you're welcome back. Now, public health experts have warned that highly contagious infectious diseases, including the pandemic influenza and uh, coronavirus, uh, COVID-19, have a potential of re-emerging and producing second and possibly a third wave. And these subsequent rounds may be worse than the first. Today, we're speaking with a doctor, and she's here with us. I'd like you to all welcome. Uh, yes, in fact, our second guest, we wish she were, she were here live with us in the studio. But you know what's going on, social distances. A lot of people would rather stay in the comfort of their homes and have this conversation on a lot of platforms. So joining us via Zoom this morning is Dr. Oreolua Finney. She's a senior special assistant on health to the Lagos State Governor. She's also head of risk communication and social mobilization, Lagos State, COVID-19 response. Thank you so much for joining us on the program. Thank you, good morning. Thank good, you. Morning, good morning, Lagos. Good morning, Dr. Finney. Um, well, Dr. Finney will dive straight into it. We are told that the second wave of COVID-19 is currently ravaging the land. What are the implications of this? Okay, well, the implication simply is yeah, that we've seen a higher number of infections. Um, the isolation centers are back, filled up or from almost nearly empty in October. Um, we're seeing more emergency calls. Generally, there's uh, more pressure on the system right now. A lot more people are falling ill to varying degrees um, from, of course, the traditionally uh, asymptomatic to people who are very, very ill and unfortunately an increase in death as well. So that's the implication of the second wave. Well, there's a word we keep hearing, mutation. And um, especially with the advent of the second wave of the virus. And um, there's something you said that also caught my attention. By October, you said the, the centers were almost empty and they're filled beyond capacity at the moment. What exactly is this about? Mutation and, you know, the, the, the implication of why we have so many people at those centers at the moment. Okay, so um, mutation and strain, they're sort of inter, intertwined, as we would say. Mutation means something has changed form from how it was originally. Um, and sometimes it's also a coping mechanism for the virus, like any other um, entity, it's trying to survive. So once it feels that, oh, you know something about me, maybe I'll change my shirt or I'll change my shoes or put on a face cap and therefore you will not recognize me. Um, like they will say on social media parlance, on this guy. Hmm. Um, so what this does, is to maybe sometimes temporarily confuse the immune system. Is it new? Is it not new? Is it the same? But then also what we have now, it's a, a new strain, um, one that was identified originally in the UK. Um, and what they are also telling us about this new strain is that it is a lot more infectious. And uh, it's not that it is easier, in short, it is easier to catch this new one. And because it is easier, we have seen it spread so much faster. Um, we have seen pockets of uh, spread events, which usually are social events. We're talking about parties, weddings, gatherings, anywhere where people are going to come together. Um, we've seen it. We've seen it escalate, and therefore we have now seen that um, people are ending up more and more and more in the isolation centers because they're feeling very ill and um, therefore cannot remain at home. I mean, there are many ways in which the um, illnesses are being handled. Okay. Uh, the public phase, there's the private people accredited, um, private accredited hospitals, and of course, the Lagos State home-based care um, scheme. So we're just seeing a lot more, a lot more infections and people need to be ex extremely careful no. right now. 
Now, Dr. Finney, uh, thanks, thanks so much for explaining that. Um, well, the holidays are over now. We've all had uh, a great time at the beaches, at parties everywhere, you know, and now we are reaping the, uh, we are reaping the results of uh, mm. possibly being careless, careless and all of that. Now, is the, is the government's communication and awareness campaign on this scourge, is it really hitting home? How come? How come the compliance level is low? That's my worry. Okay, I think globally, um, we've seen a phenomenon where um, people have been constrained for a long period of time. Um, it's not that the, there's a huge government awareness campaign ongoing right now by the Lagos State government on social media, on traditional media. I'm here, I'm talking to you as well, and I'm hoping that the people of Lagos are listening and um, the country in general. Now, People must take responsibility individually. The government has done as much as it can. But at the end of the day, the domiciliation of responsibility lies with individuals. It means that I need personally now, and we all do need to weigh each interaction. This, when I want to step out of my door, is it necessary? Is it important? Today is a Saturday. And typically, it's full of social events. Are they necessary at this point in time? Those are some of the questions we now need to start asking ourselves. Or the other thing we see is that, that um, the gatekeepers at various places, whether supermarkets, whether hall, they're great with you putting on your mask as you step in. The minute you step in, you bring down the mask and you continue. That is neither here nor there. And there is no way, there is no government that can police every single member of the society. There is a responsibility individuals must bear for their actions. So we should all personally take responsibility for where we go and how we go there. Okay, an area that um, is of concern to me at this point in time is the rural areas. Um, you know, we have a lot of avenues where we can get um, critical and important information in the towns like Lagos, like Abuja, Port Harcourt, and all of that. But we've got loads of our family members way back in the villages. You know, he, John just asked about government um, strategy, whether it's working or not. What is the strategy in place to ensure that the people in the remote areas, because they're part of us, um, that they get to know what's happening and um, they, they get the information and that they comply, especially the younger ones? Excellent. Um, so in Lagos, I'll talk about Lagos, we have a very robust surveillance system. And surveillance simply means surveillance, uh, like in um, police or detective terms, that you are keeping an eye on the environment. And here, when we say surveillance, we're keeping an eye out in each environment for diseases. And there are people in communities within Lagos, I'll talk about Lagos, and let people not have their eye remote areas in Lagos as well. It's not all um, via Nikeja. So we have uh, surveillance officers who are there monitoring. They have been well-trained. They, they can identify the symptoms and signs. And there's an escalation process where we can then get to know. But getting the news across to them is through the same medium. We use individuals within the community. We use development associations, community leaders, we have engaged community leaders extensively, traditional leaders, the social leaders, youth leaders. And of course, radio. Radio is a veritable um, form of dissemination of information. Um, the information is not just going out across TV or social media. The radio too, messages are there, jingles are there. So where there are all sorts of, we are reaching out across all platforms that you can imagine so that people are aware they know what it is, they know how to prevent it. And in case they see what looks like it, and maybe it's, they also know how to um, get the feedback back across to the center for support. Yes, thank, so. th thank you, thank you, Dr. Oralua Fini. Um, now, I think at this point, we should really appreciate uh, the effort you know, of the government in helping us to wade through these very difficult times. Well, we have just a few minutes left. Uh, before you go, we want to know 
the issue of vaccines? What hope and how soon? <laughs> okay, vaccines, plenty of hope and as soon as possible. Um, the vaccine response is the federal government response. Um, and I know that Nigerians know that Nigeria has a very robust vaccine storage and dissemination system. Um, 2020, in the midst of COVID, we were able to kick polio out of Nigeria. And um, that was not a by magic event. It was through vaccination consistency, cold chain. I know that all that structure will come to bear right now to ensure that the vaccine also is disseminated um, appropriately. Of course, vaccines are, and the logistics of vaccines, vaccines are not things that you can just throw in your bag and move around. They require special logistics, which we are very um, competent with. We are very competent with. And um, so what we now need to do is to wait for our order to come in and to understand how um, the distribution is going to take place. All the systems are already very much on ground. I believe that Nigerians should um, keep hope alive. But have you said that even with the vaccine, for the countries that we have seen that have started to give vaccines, you must still take the prevention and the precautionary measures because you are still able to transmit the virus. So it's not going to be do away with the mask immediately you get the jab. You get the jab, you still keep your mask, you still wash your hands. And um, hopefully before the end of 2021, fingers crossed, um, think, and if we all play our part, everybody must play their part. We think that um, we should be able to get better outcomes. Okay, Lagos State, um, it's, it's a law. There's a law that has been passed against you know, non-wearing of the masks and there's penalty attached to it. Um, while we wind up, um, if there's anything about our diet that we could change also to help us, I, I'd like you to tell us how, what's happening to compliance, what's happening to deterrent, and um, you know, what is happening to the people who are found not wearing masks. Are they paying 200,000 200, uh, fine, or are they being locked up somewhere? Because we need to believe get to doing something, you know, drastic to ensure that people comply. Okay. Um, I'm sure you saw yesterday in the news that the federal government has said um, if people don't um, behave, then we're looking at another lockdown. And there is no way people will not be affected by another lockdown. It's a financial issue immediately. Mm -hmm. It becomes a difficulty immediately. I think beyond fining, like I said, compliance becomes a personal thing. I would shudder to think that the only way to get people to do things properly is to start more or less chasing them with the fines and detention and uh, jailing and all that. Yes, all those things are there. The law is there and it is a deterrent. But I think more than that, we must all resolve within ourselves that we are going to do the right thing. If it is not a necessary outing, we are not going to go. We are going to restrict ourselves and as much as possible, whatever work can be done from the confines of your home that they will be to be done from there. Um, then and only then can we see the numbers reduced. There was a, um, a, a, a lot of movement in December and that is the outcome of that that we're seeing now. Mm. There was a lot of movement. Um, the video of uh, the beach video, that was frightening. And I'm sure that um, people have seen that the effects of all these things are there. COVID-19 is real. On the dietary level, we all know the right things to do. We need to improve our fruits intake, vegetable intake, and get sleep, enough sleep. Um, minimum seven to eight hours per night may seem difficult, but it is where you are resting that your body can fight. It is when you are resting that your immune system is boot, rebooting and repairing itself. So let us eat healthy meals, um, not overloading on protein. Healthy does not mean eight pieces of meat. Please. Mm. Well, I'm sure. Healthy I'm, means fruits. I'm sure. <laughs> I'm sure. <laughs> I'm <laughs> vegetable. 
I'm sure, Doctor, you will give us some praise for what we have done so far. For almost one year now, we've you been, have done we, we have well. done you we have, have done, done our best. Well, in one word, just one last question: When will our yeah. lives return to normal? Soon, ever. When? Only God knows. <laughs> Nobody can give you a time. Nobody. <laughs> Nobody, but we believe that before the end of this year, before the end of this year. Okay. Are you happy with our response? I'm not too sure that I believe her, but uh, <laughs> I'm just, <laughs> but I'm hopeful. <laughs> okay, doctor, hopeful. I believe that um, how soon will depend on how responsible we all get individually exactly. and how this message exactly. sinks in. Yes, how soon? So it's in the hands of every one of us. Thank you so much, Dr. Finney. Thank you. And um, please send our regards to His Excellency, the Governor. And well done. Absolutely. Thank you so Thank much you. for coming. Thank you. Okay. It's still today with John and Helen. And um, if you've watched this program for the past few weeks, you know that we are not the only one on this show. Farrell is standing by. And um, she's going to be speaking with a frontline worker. Dr. Victor Ekon, who is medical director, Amor Shield Medical Center, Reddington Hospital Group, um, here in Lagos. Please, if you don't go away, you will join Pharaoh with her guest on the next interview, which I assure you will be very, very interesting. Don't go away.